Today on West Chicago Model Railroad, let's take a look at this newly released, let's call it Beta Santa Fe F3 engine from Menards. Hey folks, Matt here with West Chicago Model Railroad. Appreciate everybody coming back to the channel. Today we have a bit of surprise. Yesterday, July 12th, Menards released a Santa Fe F3 unit they've, that they've been working on apparently for the last couple of years. Unfortunately, with the COVID last year and everything else, it delayed the launch. But what they did is they released about 200 of these and they want to get feedback from everyone and that's kind of what I meant by it's kind of a beta release because this is not going to be the final product all right this is what they've done so far and I kind of like what they're doing they're putting a limited number out there and they want people to look at them give feedback do we need to change anything what's working what isn't working and kudos to Menards for doing something like that because uh, you know for a manufacturer to go directly to the consumer and say hey you know what do you guys want to see and what do you guys like and dislike about this model and we're going to take that back to the drawing board or we're going to make you know those changes that you know we see uh you know a lot of feedback on right so the goal here is to run it all over the place <laughs> check everything out check all the features out see what works, see what doesn't work, and that's what I'm going to do. However, I would like to get this out to the, you know, the awesome model railroaders out there on YouTube and everybody else who, you know, enjoys my videos. Uh, I kind of want to show you guys this model and what it's all about. Hey folks, Matt here with West Chicago Model Railroad. Thanks for watching the channel. Do appreciate it. So here was the box that I received from Menards. And, of course, uh, like I said in my intro, this is the new Santa Fe F3 diesel locomotive that they have been developing over the last few years. This is what I received, like, came right on my porch just like this. So, I do not know what's inside. I have not opened it. So, we're going to open it right now. We're going to check the contents of what's inside. We'll do a little sneak peek at anything we can. And then we'll get on to the uh, the full review. Okay, so let's see. I don't know if this is like the final packaging or if there's a box within a box here. I guess we'll I guess we'll find out, huh? All right, so we do have some styrofoam, and actually, that's that's actually packed pretty 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 cool. I kind of like that. Okay, so <laughs> I'm hoping there's a any some kind of documentation in here. So let's go ahead. Oh well, there's, it is a plastic clamshell, which I kind of assumed that maybe it would be. So here's kind of what you get when you open it up. Um, this is pretty typical Menards packaging. Uh, most of their box cars and rolling stock come pretty much exactly like this. It's kind of like a you know a smaller, longer cardboard box, and then a, a plastic clamshell inside. So here's the remote, and you know your flashy <laughs> Batman pows, <laughs> roll control, train sounds, two powerful motors, working lights, metal chassis. All right, so let's go ahead and. Get this out of the clamshell so there's some styrofoam underneath. Show you the back. Nothing, uh, nothing awesome there. <laughs> All right. Here's the top. Let's see, anything, sound system with volume control on the remote, sound includes horn, bell, and conductor dispatch talking. So, 
Am I under the impression that this does not have engine sounds? I guess we'll find out. It is compatible with three rail train cars, including Lionel and MTH. Navigates 03 when curves are larger. So, working lights, dome style headlight, lights with forward motion, lighted cab interior with two engineer figures, reverse lighting on rear of engine, illuminated classification lamps. So, let's open this up. Let me. Okay, now. So, it is, it's got some, some huff to it. it. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Uh, you know, these, uh, these trucks are actually pretty cool. <laughs> They're definitely like, you know, these are, you know, uh, plated and the body, you know, is just kind of a basic kind of matte silver. But there's the front. And let's take a look at the back. Does not look like there's a rear light on the back. Underneath, I believe this is the switch to turn on and off sounds. And here's our speaker. And this does not have a smoke unit, and these are indeed blocked off. So you can't accidentally <laughs> pour smoke in there. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's put that right there, and then we'll get the remote out, and we'll take a look at that. Sorry for the messy here. Put there, and then here is the remote. There's our, our favorite dog from Menards. There's a volume here on an off switch. And then again, we'll take a closer look at everything uh, when we get into the uh, kind of the, the deeper dive here. But um, yeah, this was the opening so far. Uh, yeah, let's get, uh, let's get to it. This looks very promising. All right, so I just wanted to put a disclaimer out there. Uh, I'm not a sponsor of Menards. This was not given to me by anybody. I did purchase this myself. Uh, the total cost out the door shipped to me was $164.88. Yes, that's $164.88. Uh, it <laughs> That is a very low price. Now, is that going to be the price for the actual production model that they're going to kind of mass produce? I don't know. I couldn't tell you that. My guess would probably would probably be no, it's not. Uh, because if they have to do any changes to this or make uh, some kind of uh, large enhancements, the price is definitely going to go up. Now, is it going to go up a lot? Probably not. I, I still see this probably in the sub 100 levels, like between $150 and $200. Again, that's my opinion only, subject to change. That's just kind of the gut feeling that I get. So uh, I'll go over the features that Menards has put on their website. So uh, again, very limited, only 200 produced. Uh, two powerful motors, great for pooling. That, that's all they say about it. Uh, comes with a remote control, so kind of like the Lion Chief and Lion Chief Plus stuff. Uh, you can go forward, reverse, horn, bell, crew talk. Uh, I'll show you the remote in a bit. You can adjust the volume on the remote and it's a dial. It's not like a button you have to mess with. So it's actually, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, there are is directional lighting uh, from the front headlight. There are illuminated number boards. When you're going in reverse, the reverse Backup light come, comes out of the the the, uh, the the door on the back of the cat of the engine. The uh, it has a rugged stamped metal frame, or should I say steel frame? Uh, metal trucks with diecast frames, realistic train sounds. Uh, there is an on-off switch on the bottom of this unit, so if you don't want any sounds, you don't have to have them. You can just Flip the switch and you are good to go. This unit weighs about 2 pounds and 12 ounces. And the dimensions are 13 inches in length, 2.5 inches width, and 3.5 inches in height. And that does not include the horns. So, Alright, so here's the remote you get. It uh, looks pretty close to, you know, how Lionel does their Lion Chief remotes. 
So there's a Menards Railroad image here. You have Santa Fe, you got the road number on there. Here's your horn and your crew talk and your bell. And then again, you know, forward and reverse. Uh, there are no powered electrocouplers on this engine. They are working couplers, uh, but they are not remote couplers at all. So, uh, very cool item here is this volume dial. Uh, you don't have to do any kind of like weird button pushes and turn the throttle. You just go up and down with this simple dial, and this is great. Here's your on and off switch, and then back here, <laughs> It's our uh, trusty, uh, trusty dog friend from Menards, and this is where you put the batteries in. And I actually, when I opened this up, I did have a problem with the remote, and we'll go over that a bit later. Okay, so let's go in for a closer look here at the front of this unit. Down below, we got a working coupler down here. Now these are the um, the little plunger style couplers not really a huge fan of those but you know they work so uh got a really nice war bonnet scheme in the front santa fe here got a headlight we got our road numbers here so 3945 now that is a four digit road number and f3 units did obviously did not have four digit road numbers but this seems to be a nod to the post-war Santa Fe F3s, which had four-digit road numbers. Um, it's perfectly fine. In fact, something really cool about the road number is that a lot of the crew talk, I'll call it crew talk, but you know what I mean, but uh, a lot of the talk and chatter here actually references that road number, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, Menards did a pretty good job in adding something like that. So there are two crew figures in there. The, the cab is lighted inside. Uh, we got two horns on top. These are plastic horns, and one of them doesn't like to stay, so I may have to uh, pop it off and glue it back on again. All right, so let's, uh, let's move down to the side. Okay, so let's look at the engineer's side of the cab here. Start at the bottom here with this... Uh, just really highly detailed truck. I like these trucks. I do. I I know they're chrome. I know they don't really match the body of the unit, but it's different and it's unique. It's kind of cool, right? Like, look, we're, you know, maybe as an adult, you know, and a lot of us scale people, you know, folks, yeah, okay, it's not like the most prototypical thing, but look, if you're a kid, you know, a kid sees this, they're just all over it, right? Like, if I was 10 years old, I'd be like, this is the coolest F3 unit I've ever seen, right? So let's let's take it for 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 what it's worth, okay? So uh, everything else just really, you know, a lot of it's molded in, but, you know, great paint job, and, you know, you got these this, these metal things on the ladder, uh, the metal, pl metal plates there. Uh, the paint job is, you know, pretty decent. Like, you know, I haven't, I didn't notice anything with the, the actual like red paint there I did have a few scratches here and there on the silver paint but again this is supposed to be a you know demo or beta model it's not going to be absolutely perfect so you know let's keep that in mind as we you know as we go down the review here so there's a really cool porthole here with a like a plastic insert for the window let's scooch on down we'll take a look at the, the fuel tank and kind of the uh the, the rest of the the side of this f3 unit all right so got a nice little santa fe label right here again you know molded in detail yet you, you know these little plastic rivets and stuff like that to simulate you know like plating um the vents are not see-through but you know they're, they're kind of cool nevertheless uh the fuel tank down here kind of matches the trucks with that like really you know highly reflective chrome metal and obviously the rear truck matches the front truck got a uh, door here the doors do not open and again here's another um, another insert window insert here uh, for the porthole and that pretty much does it for the for the rest of this side we'll go look at the rear and then we'll just finish up looking at the top and then we'll actually look at the bottom as well I'll flip it over and we'll 
take a quick look at the bottom of it. All right, so again, look the, we're looking at the rear of this F3 unit. Uh, you know, there's no diaphragm here. Uh, going down here to the coupler again, you know, it's like a, like a I think they call it like a thumbtack coupler. So, if I can lock this thing into place, and we just hit that little thumbtack, opens right up. Uh, the light, the the rear light actually comes out of this 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 uh, window on the door. Uh, which is <laughs> kind of interesting. I mean, it's a good idea, right? Instead of actually putting it like on the sides here, which I, I believe they were on the um, uh, one side of the uh, the, uh, the unit itself, there um, they just used the window for the door and said, "Look, that's where the rear light's going to come out of." So, all right, sure. Uh, got some uh, again the matching ladder here, chrome ladder here in the rear that matches the rest of the trucks and the fuel tank, and that is about it for the rear of this uh, F three unit. Let's take a look at the top. Alrighty. So, we got some fans here. We got two smokestacks. Now, keep in mind that there is no smoke unit in this unit. Uh, whether or not that's going to be something they're going to put in, I really don't know. Uh, it'd be kind of cool, but obviously that's going to add to the price of the unit as well. Uh, they are blocked off, so even if you would, try, even if you thought it had a smoke unit and you poured smoke in there well it's just gonna come over on top these are blocked off and for good measure obviously uh, you know I got some some top detail over here as well but other than that there's really not much else going on uh, up on top of this unit so it's fine it's nice it's you know it's nice for what it is again you know when we look at the price point and we and we balance that or you know compare that to the features you know, this thing definitely exceeds uh, in the bang for the buck market, right? All right, let's take a look underneath. All right, so we'll start on the the rear side here. So here's here's our power truck. Again, this thing has dual motors, so there's a motor for each truck. Uh, there's one pickup roller here. Go ahead and turn this so slightly. Here's our speaker, and then back here is your sound switch. And that is the only switch that is on this, on the, um, in fact, the only switch on, on the engine itself is the switch right here, which turns on and off the sounds. That's it. That's all you can do is turn on and off the sounds. Everything else is done on the remote. All right, so as we move to the front, there's not really any changes here, folks. One pickup roller. As again, this is a powered truck. Uh, there are two traction tires here. There's also two traction tires on the rear as well. Okay, so before we turn this on, I did want to go over the issue that I had with the remote when I took it out of the box and I put it on the track. The engine did start up, however, the remote did not. And there's a light up here that turns on on the remote, like that, and it did not turn on. And <laughs> it took me a while uh, to figure out the problem. What it was is this back plate comes off. The contact plates for the positive sides of the ba batteries were not touching the tips of the batteries. And the issue are these gates. If you can see them, there's these black gates that keep the battery snug, but the problem is they also keep the positive tips from touching the contact plates. And mine were just like a hair off on each one. So I took a flathead screwdriver and I bent each plate where the positive tip would touch it. And lo and behold, it turned on. So if you do run into that, that is an issue that I found out. Uh, I woke, I'm glad I was able to figure it out because otherwise it would not be doing this review right now. Okay, so if I flick the on switch here, it's going to flash. When it flashes, it means it has not connected to any engine. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this off for now. I'm going to go ahead and add track power. Now, when I add track power, this unit is going to immediately turn on. It's not going to move anywhere. 
even if you turn this on in a conventional layout, it's not moving anywhere. It just turns on and the marker, I'm sorry, and the road number lights turn on as well. So, when I hit the switch, it's not, the light's not flashing anymore, which means we have a connection to the unit. Now, I'm going to turn it down just so I can talk, and I don't have to scream. Now, you can turn the volume up all the way, which is actually is kind of cool, because then you don't have to use the switch at the bottom. You can just turn the switch down all the way, and it's obviously, you know, it's not making any noise, so... I will turn it up just a little bit here while we go through the horn and the bell and the talk and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to turn it up too long, but this thing does can get pretty loud. I'll turn it up all the way so you can hear. So that's pretty decent, actually. All right, so let's listen to the bell. So again, I'm just hitting the bell button. Uh, you can't just like keep, you just can't like do the bell manually. It's either constantly on or just constantly off. All right, so let's listen to the horn. I kind of wish the one feature or the one big feedback I have with, with this uh, F3 unit is definitely a horn. It's not that it's sounds bad. The problem is it's, it, it's not long enough, right? Like, I wish it was a longer horn. Like, the bell just keeps going, right? So, I kind of wish if I held down the horn button, that the horn would just constantly blow, right? And it doesn't, unfortunately. So, you know, that's one thing that I would definitely put on the uh, needs improved list. All right, let's hear the talk, true talk. This is actually probably the best sounding feature on this locomotive. The air brake test was good, so let's get ready to move. Roger that. We are ready to roll. Then let's go. Dispatcher, 3945 East is ready to proceed. 3945 East, confirm you're ready. Aligning switch to track one. Have a good trip. Dispatch, I see the signal has gone from red to green. We are moving. Check. The signal is green. Pretty cool. I think there are, if I remember right, I don't know, I think there was over like 30 different phrases or something like that. There could be more. Uh, there's a lot. It's definitely varied, and you definitely don't hear a lot of the same things twice in a row. I don't know how the, the randomizer package works in this thing or not. Or I don't know if it's, it's the same stuff. It's just the same thing over and over again, and it's just like kind of a, just kind of goes through a loop. I haven't figured that out yet, but it's actually pretty cool. Now the engine rev is pretty decent. Got to go back to that price point here of you know $168 shipped to my house. Like for the features that we're seeing here right now, pretty good. Like, this blows away any product out there, price versus feature. Like, you know, obviously, Lionel, MTH, Williams, can't even touch this with the, you know, with the amount of features and sounds you get. It is, like, pseudo command control, you know, uh, there's an argument for that, but obviously it's, you know, pseudo command control, right? Like, um, um, it's... I have 18 volts out of the track right now. It's being controlled by a remote unit. Uh, so, you know, it's got command control brains. All right, so let's go ahead and get some passenger cars hooked up to this chief and uh, take a first spin. All right, before we do that, I did want to go over one item. This does definitely, definitely does not have any kind of cruise control, okay, uh, or speed control, however you want to say it. 
Uh, it definitely feels like a conventional engine in relation to how much you have to turn the knob to get it moving. And when it hits that initial burst, it moves pretty quickly. So I will show that to you right now. I am going to move the camera back just a little bit though so you can kind of <laughs> kind of see it because it jumps pretty decently. Okay, so let's get this thing moving forward. So like I said, it, it jumps pretty good. It starts, if you were to look at the throttle like a clock, it starts moving around, going, it starts moving forward around like one o'clock, like 1.30. And then I'll go back. Again, I'm going very, very small increments. And it just decides it wants to go. So, again, no speed control, no cruise control. Uh, again, those are costs that would have to be added into this unit. Whether or not that's feasible and whether or not that's going to, uh, well, it's definitely going to increase the price, but by how much, I don't know. So let's get these passenger cars hooked up and let's, uh, let's uh, run around the layout. Approaching Menardsville Junction, the track is clear and we have a green signal. The first clear is green signal. The air brake test was good, so let's get ready to move. Roger that, we are ready to roll. Then let's go. Dispatcher, 3945 East is ready to proceed. 3945 East is ready to proceed. Dispatch, I see the signal has gone from the red to green. We are moving.
say, like, all in all, uh, you know, th for what you pay, this is a cool little F3-like unit. You know, it's uh, it's a little bigger than a Lionel Legacy. It's a little longer. Uh, it's about an inch longer, and I'll show a picture of that, uh, you know, up on the in the video here in a second. Uh, but you'll see that it just sits a little bit longer, so it's not... Is it an accurate representation of an F3 unit? No. But does it have to be? No, it doesn't, actually. So... Uh, the, uh, just to a note, the passenger cars here, uh, the refrigeration car and the, all of the passenger cars except for the observation car are all MTH plated. The observation car is actually a K-Line aluminum business car, Santa Fe business car. I didn't have any problems pull. it didn't seem like it was chugging at all, it, it, I didn't have any problems pulling any of those cars. Now again... The starting and the uh, stopping are not really smooth. <laughs> there's there's definitely a bit of jerking going on uh, both directions. But, you know, again, as far as, you know, features go and price goes, this is a pretty neat little unit. And I'm really happy that Menards is... I think they really need to fill, uh, fill this gap. And let's be honest, the sky's the limit here, folks. Like, they don't, you know, Santa Fe, obviously they went with Santa Fe just because it's, you know, it's one of the most popular or iconic F3 units ever made, uh, both, you know, in prototype and in toy trains. But they could go so many different routes. You know, they, they have a base here, right? They have a, a core that they can work with. And they can start creating more body styles, uh, they can, you know, obviously do other F3 units. You know, they can do, you know, New York and and um, Southern Pacific and so on and so on. But, you know, kudos to Menards for what they've they've created here. I'm really happy with this with this unit. This is definitely something um, that I'll give to the kids when they come over, uh, or somebody maybe that just is not as uh, you know, just somebody who's not as skilled or doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to pick up the Legacy Remote and stuff like that. I'm like, here, try this out. And, uh, yeah, I think they'll just have a good time with it. So, as for a grade level on this, uh, it's really hard to um, give a grade on this. I would say it's not applicable at the time just because it's, you know, it's hard for me to give a grade to a beta unit. I mean, for a for a beta or test engine, it definitely gets an A+, plus, right? Because it's, you know, it's pretty featured for something that they're sending out to have people test. Now, does it need some adjustments? Or are there things that they could put in this that are inexpensive that would, you know, give a better experience? Sure. Uh, number one, again, for me, is the horn. Uh, you know, the horn sound is fine, but that uh, I need that really long, iconic horn sound off of my Santa Fe unit, right? The bell and the crew talk are perfectly fine. The lighting is fine, to be honest. You know, the number boards, it's, it's a little, you know, little tiny LED, and you can kind of see it in there, but that, that's okay. I'm not worried about that. Uh, for the paint job and for the trucks... I like it if there are probably some folks that don't like it. I think it makes it unique. Uh, again, and what I said before is if I was a kid and I had this train, I would that would be like one of the best things about it, right? Like, oh, look at these trucks. Look at this fuel tank. Look how, look how shiny it is, right? So <laughs> at least the trucks and the fuel tank match my passenger cars, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, again, all in all, this is a pretty neat little... Santa Fe F3 unit, and if Menards stays under the $200 price tag, man, they're going to sell a lot of these, <laughs> I'm telling you, especially if they start making sets, right? If they put this, you know, they could put this in their passenger cars, or, you know, freight cars, they don't have any passenger cars, but um, maybe passenger cars are in the future, but if they put this engine with a few freight cars for, I don't know, $220 or something, 
holy cow, these are going to fly off the shelf like crazy. Like, these are great starter engines. They're great for people who, you know, don't, not worried about scale size and stuff like that. So, again, kudos to Menards. Um, definitely keeping mine, uh, and I'll definitely keep running it. All right, folks. Well, I really appreciate everybody watching. If there isn't, if there's something that I didn't go over or touch on, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Uh, I'll be very happy to answer everyone's questions. Uh, if I do run into any more kind of quirks or anything else on this engine, I will post an update updated video on it as well. And again, uh, as I've said before, if you like what you see, please give me a like. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that helps me create more content on this channel. It lets me know that you're watching me and you're enjoying my content. And I want to keep making stuff like this for you guys. Um, I really enjoy what I do and I want to make sure that you're enjoying it as well. So with that said, everybody have a wonderful night and Santa Fe all the way.